Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode two of whatever I end up calling this series, a quick start guide to web development. We are working on this website here, or one that is similar. Um, and last episode, if you haven't seen it, you should go back to episode one, probably. Uh, we created this HTML page here, we downloaded brackets, and we made some empty CSS and JavaScript files. So like I said last time, we are going to now work in our CSS file to begin styling our web page. And what I mean by that is here's my live preview. And it looks pretty boring, um, not just because the content is a little boring, but because it's just a white page with black text. It looks like, like a letter that you'd send to someone. Uh, what we want to have is a custom color for the background, maybe a custom text size and uh, colors. So we'll do that because that's that's pretty pretty basic and a good intro to CSS. So we can have that up in the background, and we are going to go to our CSS file. We'll go there. Actually, yes, CSS file. So CSS, uh, standing for Cascading Style Sheet, is a different programming language than HTML. So you wouldn't use tags like this. In fact, you can see because it's a CSS file that brackets does not even autocomplete or autofill the closing tag because that's not how CSS works. Um, they are two different programming languages working together. And in fact, JavaScript is a third language working all in unison to create one cohesive website. What? Why would I ever? Okay. Thank you, Microsoft. All right, so the way it works is that you can take specific elements of your page and then give them styling attributes per element. So, so far we have a couple. We have a body tag, for example, and we have a P tag. So if I were to style the P tag, I could just write P and then put an opening and a closing curly brace there. And then inside of here, I could write, for example, color and brackets is so great, it shows you all the things you could change about this P tag. All right, color. Oops, and then it auto-completed for me there. They give you some colors you can write, which CSS uh, understands natively. So I'll say burly wood. Why not? And then control has to save it. And if you've noticed, our website has not changed at all. Why is that? Well, it's because even though Bracket says all three of these files kind of link together in the working files section, our HTML page doesn't know that our CSS file exists. Like if this was on the internet, this is our entire website right here. So nowhere in this code does it say, hey, look for a style sheet to try and style our code. So we need to write that in here. Uh, like I said in episode one, that kind of stuff goes inside the head tag because we don't actually want it to appear on the page. We don't want someone to see the text like, hey, look for a style sheet. We just want to tell the HTML page that. So above the head, I'm sorry, above the title, inside the head, we're going to write a link. We're going to link to our style sheet here. And the way we do that is by simply typing link. And then we don't close that tag yet. Uh, instead, we're going to write rel, R-E-L, equals, and then inside of quotation marks, we'll say style sheet. We need the type and look at this. It already auto completed it for me. So I'm going to enter for text to CSS. And then we have what's called the href. And look at that. It's right there. Brackets truly is great. Um, so once we have that, we can close the tag with that, that greater than sign. And hit control S to save. And if you look at that, look at the website, it is now taking our CSS file and using it to style this P element here. Okay, so we could do other stuff in here. Um, for instance, background color. And that really shows you clearly that the P tag, uh, the P element extends all the way from the left side of the page to the right side of the page. It doesn't just go as long as the text is as inside of it. So what do we want to do other than just that one P tag? Well, how about our entire website, right? If we go to our website that I made before here, the entire background is black. It's not just like this one line. So how do you think we do that? 
Well, in our index page, we have a body tag. We already styled the P tag, but let's style the body tag now. The body is literally all the content that appears on our web page. So in fact, you want to use the body tag pretty sparingly. Um, for a simple website like this, it doesn't matter too much. But again, whatever attributes we give the body tag inside of the CSS file will be applied to the entire page unless explicitly told otherwise. So in the body, we can say uh, background color again and choose a good one here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll go with this. Cadet blue. Oops. Cadet blue. There we go. And so now you can see our entire web page is that blue color, except for the P tag, which was explicitly told, no, our background color is aqua. Okay. Now what we can do next is go back to our index page and we should probably center this text. Also, we should probably change this text. Uh, I'm going to be making the type or the uh, website that I showed you before the multiplication game. So I'll say something like what is, and eventually in JavaScript, we'll have a randomly generated numbers here. Uh, but to start off to kind of iteratively program, I'll put in some numbers myself. I'll say, what is eight multiplied by eight? And to center it, we can just put some center tags here in HTML. We could also do this inside of the style sheet, but I'll try doing it here. And it kind of closed it for me, which is a good thing, but a little annoying because I already wrote that. There we go. What is eight multiplied by eight? And it's in the center of the page. So again, there are some things that you can see both CSS and HTML can do. Like centering, we could have done that in CSS, but it, it's just a little easier to put center tags right there. Um, so after that, we're gonna wanna make a input box where we could type in our answer there and then a submit button too. So I'm gonna make a new paragraph because I want the input box to be below this text here. There we go. And it's actually super simple how we do that. We have an input tag. So we open the tag and type input. We don't want to type, which we will say is text. If I close that, it's already there. Uh, so we have our way to type in our, our website now. Really simple uh, and powerful in HTML. A lot of these very short lines of code can make something great happen. So it's already handling all the typing for us. We have a space to type. Great. Uh, next, we'll also want a submit button. So next line here, we have some button tags, a little bit different from the input tag right there, which is self-closing. Um, we're going to open the button tag here and then inside of here. So there's our button on the page. Uh, to make it bigger, we're going to write some text inside of here. So I'll say submit. And now you can see that it's as big as that. Uh, so we have an input and we have a submit button. You can click it, doesn't do anything. The way that these are gonna actually interact with our website, and by the way, you can see we also have this blue bar here because this is another P tag. So CSS will automatically style every P tag with what's in here, unless we use what's called IDs, which we're actually going to use right now. Uh, as I was saying though, our submit button doesn't do anything yet. And this doesn't really do anything. We can type in it. We're gonna to need to access that with JavaScript. And the way we do that is just like I was saying in our CSS file, how if we type P, it'll get every P tag. How would we get access to just this submit button? How do we know on a website with multiple forms or multiple input text boxes, which one we're looking at? And the way we do that is with IDs. So after input type equals text, inside of that little arrow there, we're gonna give it an ID. We just say ID equals, and then in quotes, uh, something that the user will not see. So you can write whatever you want in here. They could inspect the page, so don't make it offensive, but it's not gonna appear on the web page. It's just for us to access via the code. So I'll say ID equals input field. And then for the button, we'd say button ID equals submit button. Okay. 
And for this whole p tag right here, we can also put an ID in there. So we'll say p ID equals, uh, I don't know, how about uh, input row? Because we're talking about this entire paragraph, this row right here. So if we go to our style sheet now, let's get rid of this, this styling. You can say pound sign or hashtag input row. And now we know we're talking about just this paragraph right here. So again, we could say uh, background color aquamarine. So now we're only affecting this paragraph, not all paragraphs like this one up here, just this one. So let's make an ID for our top paragraph as well. ID equals, I'll say math prompt because that's where the question actually appears. Then our style sheet, we can say pound sign math prompt. And let's change the font size. I believe it's called font font size. There we go. Make it a little bigger, maybe even bigger, smaller, bigger, small. That's good. What is eight multiplied by eight? I'll change the, the font color as well, uh, which I believe is just color to a nice cornflower blue. Oh, that's terrible. Um, to a nice, whatever. We'll make it look pretty later. That's your job. I'm just showing you how to do it. I'm not a, I'm not a designer, I'm a coder. So what is eight multiplied by eight? We have our submit button over here, so let's center that real quick, and then I think we'll call it a day right there. Um, instead of our p tag, all right, center. All right, come on, brackets. And then put a closing center tag. Oh, there you go. And I'll indent that over. Okay. So it's really shaping up now. You can see we have the prompt at the top. We have our response area down here. Yeah, that's why I should have called it response area. Oh, well. Um, and we were styling this paragraph separate from this paragraph down here. So we're at a point now where obviously it's up to you to make it look pretty. I'll show you, I'll give you the tools and all you great designers out there can make it look as beautiful as you want. Um, at this point, we're ready to start working with JavaScript though. We're ready to start making the submit button actually do something, uh, giving these a randomly generated values and giving us a, a response down here if it's correct or incorrect. So that is gonna be the next video. Thank you all for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe or like it. And if you didn't like it, probably just don't vote on it. All right, thanks guys, see you next time.